Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down one subject into three different paintings to help challenge you and see where your skill level is with watercolor. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So for this whole tutorial, I'm gonna be using a Velvet Touch size 10 flat brush, and we're gonna be painting three different apples in three different levels of painting techniques. So I'm mixing up green gold and cupric green together and I'm just gonna outline the shape of the, of the apple with the edge of my brush. So if you're in more of the beginner level, most beginners will outline the shape of the apple and do a more circular shape, but apples aren't perfectly round. So in this case, I've got a more round or perfectly circular shape that I'm filling in with my green mixture as my transparent layer, pretty much all the way around and just leaving a highlight area at the top where the stem will go. And then next, I'm going in with just cupric green, a slightly darker, thicker consistency to add in a little bit more shadow or mid-tones. So I'm doing this using wet and wet technique, which most beginners will be able to do this at some level. And as of right now, up until now, I've only been using greens to add any color or shadow to this apple. And you'll see in the other two apples, I use other colors other than green to bring out light and shadow in different ways that light would be absorbing color on the apple. But we have a pretty decent core shadow. We have a pretty decent shadow in general on the apple. Nothing wrong with this apple, but it's just a little bit more basic than where we can go, which I'll show you in the next two. So I'm just using the edge or corner of my flat brush with some dragon's blood for the stem of the apple. And now I'm going in with my darker color green to accent that little lip area towards the stem and blending it in. I'm grabbing some more Cupra green and adding it to my green gold mixture and adding some primary yellow as well. And this is going to be my base color for my second tier apple. So our first level, beginner level, we just used green. For this one, we're starting to understand the importance of underpainting and how it affects the vibrancy or the lack of vibrancy of whatever you're painting on top of your underpainting. So I want this apple to feel really bright and crisp. So I'm using primary yellow with a touch of green gold and cupric green to tie in the color that I'm gonna use on top for my underpainting. And then my shape of my apple is also slightly different. We're not going for the perfectly round shape, but something that has more of the, the shape of the apple. So while my underpainting color is still wet, I'm going in with my lighter Cupra green and uh, green gold mixture in and starting to drop in some of that mid-tone dimension on one side of my apple. and making sure to use my brush to blend it in. Then I've got just basically cupric green, and that's gonna be the main color of the apple. So I'm gonna use that as my color and avoid the area where the highlight on this apple would be. You can wait for your underpainting to dry. Typically that's how you would approach this, but because this is more of the second level of watercolor painting test. We're kind of just going for it. And then I mixed up a slightly more neutral green by adding red to my already current green mixture that had Cooper green and green gold in it to add just a touch of a little bit of a neutral green color next to the highlight. And then I've got some sap green, cupric green, and carbon black mixed up. That's where I'm gonna carve out the lip and the deep shadow on the left side of my fruit that I'm gonna also 
bring in towards the bottom and around the core of the apple. Now I'm grabbing some white gouache and I'm gonna touch it into the highlight of the apple where I want that to go. I'm just using my imagination. I don't have a reference photo for this. So if you're wondering if there's a reference photo, there's no reference photo. I'm just choosing where I want the shadow, choosing where I want the highlight based off of practice of understanding shapes and shadow and dimension. So if you do want a reference photo, you can check one out on Pinterest and probably find a good one of a real apple or just grab an apple from the store and use that as your reference. So there's a lot more dimension even, we're not quite done yet with the second one, but there's a lot more dimension and I wasn't afraid to add in the depth with the deep shadows. A lot of times beginners really struggle with getting a lot of depth and a lot of thicker paint. So that is something that you'll see as the growth between these paintings is the consistency of paint and not being afraid of light and dark, especially dark, and understanding the importance of underpainting. So once I lay down my darker color, I'm just gonna gracefully blend it in a little bit more so it doesn't just sit in the strokey color and let it blend by using wet and wet technique. And then next, my last painting, I'm mixing up a more brown underpainting just to show you the difference between a neutral or a more vibrant underpainting. So the second one had a vibrant one and this one's gonna be a little bit more neutral. So I had yellow ochre, primary yellow, and some green gold. So this is gonna be a warm neutral, not a cool neutral. So we're gonna contrast the cool greens that we're using on top. We're gonna allow more depth out of our shadows by using this warm neutral color as our base. And I'm just getting down the basic shape for now. It doesn't need to be perfect. And adding in a little bit more green gold to punch in some bright gold yellow next to the highlight. And then once I've got most of that underpainting done, I'm gonna go in with water and a basically clean brush and blend in over the highlight and lift off any color I need to to make sure that area stays pretty light. Now I've got Cupric green and yellow or green golds mixed up a little bit more with the underpainting color. And I'm painting my next level, which is gonna be more green and as you can see, as it's blending in with the underpainting, more warm neutral, it's going to be a little bit more of a neutral green color as the base. And I'm grabbing a thicker mixture to let the vibrant green sit on top. The thinner, the more watery mixture you have, the more it will blend in with whatever it touches. So I want it to be really thick so that this bright green stays bright and doesn't blend too much with the underpainting. and then striping in some bright yellow to bring that brightness back. Another difference between beginner or more advanced painter levels is the patience aspect. A lot of beginners might get lost or confused about where to go next and give up and think they need to start over, especially when layers get a little bit confusing or muddy or not as concrete, but it really does take time and effort if you're gonna build up these colors, layers of color and shadow up slowly. So a good way to judge what level you are is by noticing how quickly you give up on something. There's nothing wrong with giving up and starting over, but a lot of the time your paintings can be fixed if you just stick with it. So next I'm adding or mixing up a creamy pale sap green with white gouache, touch of primary yellow and some sap green watercolor. And I'm gonna add in more of a pastel green, thick consistency, just avoiding the highlights still for now and adding that in with some white gouache. building up that pale green 
on top of the yellows and the dark green and blending it in. So just kind of trying to color in with this pale green a little bit further around the apple and then bringing up a darker blue green on the shadow and blending that in and trying to create more bold and confident brush strokes through this piece. But just following the form or the shape of the apple going in a C curve, the C curve is facing up, so like a C on its side. So following that C curve. And now we're starting to see that really come together with a lot more dimension and depth. I'll just go in with some pale yellow and stripe in some of the skin detail. One of the main signs of being a more advanced painter is the level of detail you pay attention to, the patience it requires to do more realistic style paintings, and understanding curve in your detail, making sure that you're following the panels on the apple. If shading is something that you really struggle with or getting more detailed, I highly recommend checking out my course, The Art Within. Section two covers the foundations of all things art. And one of the main lessons that we have in there covers shading and different styles of shading, also dimension. So that would be a very, very helpful few lessons if you struggle with sketching or painting still life like this and understanding how to shade and add detail. Alrighty, so just a couple other details on this final apple to make it look a little bit more realistic. Again, I'm just using a size two brush to stripe in some of those line details that you'd see on the skin of an apple, making sure that all of these lines are pointing back to where the stem of the apple would be. Cause that is how, that's the axis point, which is a big part of my course, The Art Within. It's the axis point on the apple, so that's where all of your curves will point back to. And then just going back in over the shadow area and adding in a little bit more depth, not afraid to go dark. And then we're gonna do the stem with some dragon's blood and burnt umber, touch of black, just a little thick, buttery consistency of this color. Adding in some shadow and line detail with my darkest color. Pale yellow with white gouache and primary yellow. And then adding back that highlight. There you go, three different apples and three different levels. Hope it was fun. I hope that was helpful for you in seeing where your skill level is in watercolor. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos, for liking these videos, and for subscribing to our channel. If you wanna take your art a couple steps further, make sure you join my Patreon, jennarainey.com forward slash Patreon, where I'm sharing exclusive tutorials every month and also doing live art classes every single month. And my course, The Art Within, will also help you to develop your own style, learn the foundations of all things art, like perspective and form and shading, and help you tap into flow state to help you create your most optimal best work ever as an artist. As always, thank you for watching these videos and I'll see you in the next one.